My name is Ramsey Weeks. I work here at the National Museum of the American Indian in as one of the cultural interpreters, part of the education department here, originally from the Assiniboine Nation. And I'm here today to talk a little bit about the tradition of ledger art. And right here on the table, we have a beautiful piece of ledger art, a very modern piece, but done using that very old tradition. Ledger art, quite simply, is that process of telling stories with pictures. So in this one, we actually have that picture of a buffalo hunt happening. We have the native people here actually chasing those buffalo. We can even tell the particular location that this is happening with the Black Hills in the background. So this is happening actually in South Dakota. We can even tell directional movement of the buffalo with the prints over here, the hoof prints. So the hunt is actually moving this way. The goal of this is actually to be hunting that white buffalo. The white buffalo being sacred, the one who actually got the hide would be held in a lot of honor. So you can really get a lot of cultural information from just the pictures here. Well, this particular piece of ledger art is actually done on a deer skin. These designs off over here, while they look an awful lot like the sun design, are actually they can be described different ways. They can be seen as a directional symbol. They can also be seen as a symbol of medicine. So that holy power. When you actually know the communities quite well, and this would show how well an individual knows the communities, the horses are actually painted very differently that painting on the horses would actually tell you who those individuals are. So you could even tell, if you're from the community, who is actually on this hunt and who is gonna be getting that white buffalo. This is just one tradition of the ledger art. I actually have here an image of another piece of ledger art. This is called a winter count. It's also telling stories with just the pictures alone. The Winter Count, though, is actually a history book. This history book covers 71 years of history, starting in 1800, going out to 1871. So you read this book in that spiral pattern. Each one of those symbols represents one year of history and represents that most important event during that year's time. Right here in 1801, there was actually an outbreak of smallpox. You can see that outline of the man with those red dots on him. Right next to him with that horseshoe in 1802 was the first successful horse raid in the community. This one is actually coming from the Dakota community from the Minnesota area. And as we continue on around, it's not just those horde events like smallpox, measles, but there would be also celestial references recorded. Right over here, for example, we have the moon, the stars around the moon, and what's really hard to see here are tiny, tiny dots. Now, obviously, the red dots don't represent smallpox. Stars don't get smallpox, they represent falling stars. So this was actually a meteor shower, one of the largest of the century. You can also record people's names with this one. So this design right here is actually a crow. That big black bird sticking out of the big black bird is an arrow. This was actually the year that the war chief, Big Crow, died in battle. So you can get even that very specific type of information. So that's also that tradition of ledger art used in a different way. Also used to tell stories to keep that history, but using just the pictures alone to keep the story. So the first step is to think of a story that you want to tell. Think of an event that has recently happened or an event in the past, an event that you never want to forget 
And when you have that image in mind, we're going to tell that story through pictures alone. To begin with, for the activity that we do with the kids, we'll actually make laminate copies of images, really popular images living in the DC area here, of course, using the Capitol, White House, Washington Monument, and actually doing them in various sizes for the kids, just using a copier to change the sizes of all of those. And just go through and get some rather popular images, maybe some animals as well. Here we have some horses and some deer. And getting some movement as well, getting the hoof prints. Of course, using these pre-made images are not required. But they can easily be shoved, placed underneath the paper. And then you can just barely see the outline and you can trace the images. So you can take these images from the web, print them out, and place those images right underneath lined paper and trace those images. Or simply draw the image freehand. And we can move the image around so we get it placed exactly where we want it. And then we can start just tracing that outline as it shows through the paper. The great thing is if it moves around, we can move it back until the image matches up again. These traced images, these pre-made images, are really great even for adults who are at that level of drawing stick figures, like I am myself. And there we have our horse. And so right here, I have some examples that were done by kids from about the ages of four, I think the oldest one we had was about 12 years old. So right here, showing a little battle scene. Even have that movement. So you see these individuals actually coming toward each other. And this one, I wanted to show a stampede of horses. One young man actually wanted to show a hunt, wanted to show hunting the deer. He was fascinated by that idea and wanted to show that. The young man who did this one actually wanted to, was imagining what it would be like in front of the White House if there was a stampede of buffalo coming by. So playing a little bit with imagination to do this one. I like this one okay. because this one is showing the use of the pre-made images along with their own imagination as well. So you can see you don't have to stick to just the pre-made images, but you can add in your own elements as well when you do it. Do the ledger art. Another variation to just doing one image, one scene, one memory, is instead to go back to the tradition of the winter count and actually make a spiral and tell that personal story of your life in that spiral. Taking one design per year of your life and just spiraling those outward. Thinking of that most important event during that particular year. It's a really fun way to get involved with your family to ask your mother, brother, father, sisters, aunts, and uncles what happened that year, particularly when we go back early in our childhood. I know for myself, I do not remember what happened when I was two years old. So it is a fun way to get some of those family stories that you may not have heard yourself.